I've reviewed so many microphones on this channel, but they were all condenser microphones. I think it's time for us to take a look at a dynamic microphone. Every time I review a condenser microphone, I always have at least one comment telling me, hey, wouldn't a dynamic microphone be better for live streaming, for example, or creating content in general? The argument here is about the pickup pattern being a little tighter than the typical cardioid, cardioid, I still can't pronounce this, condenser microphone. The sensitivity is different. You'll see more dynamic microphones in live performance. And the issue for me, so so far is that I didn't own any dynamic microphones that I could test. So today we're taking a look at the Limelight by 512 Audio. In order to test it, what you're hearing right now, it is connected into an Elgato Wave XLR. It was like the simplest interface that I can use in order to test it. Anyways, let's talk about this mic. Let's talk about the obvious, the packaging. Packaging, nothing special. It's uh, pretty clean. I like the color scheme. I like the image on it. It's very simple. When you open the box, there's this little hello message that tells you how passionate the team is about audio. I think it's a, it's a pretty cool touch. And when we reach inside the box, we will find the microphone, we will find the mount for the microphone, and we will find a little pouch, a little carry pouch for the mic. I think I've been spoiled by other companies a little too much, putting basically every accessory possible in a box, so, so I was slightly expecting more. Let's talk about the mic design itself. It seems like it is full metal, well, there's no plastic in there, and it is big as you can see here this is my hand i, I don't know if that <laughs> tells you how big it is but it's pretty big compared to other condenser microphone that i'm used to which for me makes it look like a professional microphone i'm not against the bulky metal tech i think it looks great it also feels pretty nice to the touch especially that black matte finish and then there's the shiny ring that tells you designed in austin texas limelight dynamic broadcasting microphone other than the design of the mic itself there is this adapter which also doubles as an actual shock mount this is the first I'm seeing this I've seen metal ones I've seen plastic one but this seems to be a mix between metal plastic and what I absolutely love uh, rubber this there <laughs> There is a rubberized ring for you to insert the mic into. Now, did they put this in order to absorb shock to minimize noise? Maybe. Or did they do this because when you slip the mic into it, it basically grips onto the mic so it's not adjustable. Or maybe they thought of both. Either way, as long as there's a little bit of rubber in there, I'm happy. That sounded wrong. Actually, that sounded right. <laughs> that is one layer of sound absorption that I absolutely want, especially if you're gonna put this on a table like I have right now so it is an xlr dynamic microphone it does not come with an xlr cable i believe it doesn't need a 48 volts power i will have to test it with my xlr to mini jack cable another particularity is that at the bottom and i almost missed that at the bottom there's a little switch one side says low cut the other one says flat and apparently the low cut is supposed to you know cut the low frequencies in order to avoid muddiness they say on the box but i'm guessing they mean muddiness in when it comes to noise and not necessarily when it comes to your voice cutting the lower frequencies basically avoids if there's any humming sounds coming from your table or whatever you use Using. Right now, the profile is on flat, but I'm going to switch it to low cut and maybe you will see a difference. Keep in mind that I do have filters on it right now, but we will also do a comparison without the filters. All right. So this is what it sounds like with the low cut filter applied. Basically, when the switch is on low cut and I don't know if you can hear the difference. I definitely heard the difference. It basically cut out all the low frequencies. So the voice started more, uh, sounded more radio-y. I personally love to have as much bass frequencies as I can. So this is not something that I will use, but here you go. If you have some humming problems, if your computer, for example, is on your table or touching your table and the fans are producing a little hum, this might avoid the mic from picking it up. Let's go back to the flat profile. And we're back to the flat profile. Now you might notice something here. I'm not using a pop filter at all. I am very close to the mic and it's not going wild with the plosives. This is also one of the advantages of this mic is that there's an internal pop filter that will reduce the plosives. Also in my general experience, you usually want to be as close as possible to a dynamic mic just to make sure that it picks up everything and every frequency from your voice. Also the hypercardioid, still can't pronounce it, pattern makes it so that if I even move a little bit, uh, the sound changes drastically, really drastically. But that also means that it handles noise, surrounding noise, way better than, you know, other typical mics. Right now, 
I do not have a noise filter. This is pretty much the first mic that I plug into my computer that doesn't go just on the most basic levels. This does have noise, but if you boost the gain a lot, and the difference in levels between your voice and the noise is so significant that in order to level your voice out, you will not hear the noise. No noise filters at all right now. Talking about filter, let's see how it sounds without filters. And you might be surprised, but I'm currently using two filters. A compressor, I'm using OBS Studio to capture this, a compressor and a VST plugin that is an equalizer, basically. Hi, I had to record the whole thing because um, <laughs> the initial test didn't record. Uh, that's my bad. So we are in OBS Studio right now. And what you're hearing is the microphone with an equalizer and a compressor from OBS Studio. I mean, the equalizer is Marvel GEQ, so it's a VST plugin, but this is straight in OBS Studio, what I was able to achieve in a couple seconds, really. I'm gonna turn those off, and what you're hearing right now is the raw microphone sound just plugged into the Elgato Wave XLR. I might adjust it for the volume so it's loud enough, but other than that, you're hearing what this mic sounds like at this proximity plugged into a Elgato Wave XLR without using the Elgato software. So no manipulation at all, just raw input. This is what it sounds like. And I'm really upset that I have to record this again. <laughs> but basically this is the test. Um, what you're about to hear after that will be this mic with a compressor an equalizer from OBS Studio. And then on top of that, I added a mastering preset on Adobe Premiere and also an extra little equalizer, extra compressor. Like I tweaked it up a little bit better in Adobe Premiere, but right now, raw, no filters, nothing, maybe volume adjusted. Back to you, um, future Gale or past Gale actually. Timeline is confusing. Is this X-Men? So that was 512 Audio's Limelight Dynamic Microphone. They did ask me if I wanted a condenser one or a dynamic, and I did choose the dynamic because, you know, like I hadn't reviewed any other. So that means that they do have a condenser option. One last thing that I want to talk about is the price. The price right now on their website is $199. Personally, I think it's a little expensive, but for the type of microphone that it is and the versatility of this microphone, knowing like for live performances, podcasts, and recording voices and all that, you are most certainly going to be plugging it into very, very decent USB interfaces, or not necessarily USB, but audio interfaces. I wouldn't buy this mic in order to plug it into what I cited earlier, the Behringer UMC22. Even though it has a pretty decent amp, I wouldn't do that. I would buy it to plug it into the Wave XLR, the Go XLR, something like that. This mic doesn't feel like something that is destined to amateurs, basically. This is not, hey, I'm trying to buy a cheap mic in order to start my career, no. I feel like this is the type of mic that you would buy if you were launching a podcast in a studio and you were buying, you know, five mics, five headsets, you have your giant audio interface. In that case, I would definitely recommend this mic. If you think you have a very, very decent audio interface and you are able to manipulate and create your own vocal presets, definitely recommend this mic. If you are just starting out and you don't have any audio and you don't know what the big difference between XLR and USB and, and dynamic and condenser, don't buy this mic. It's not meant for you. <laughs> don't buy this mic yet. Let me know in the comment section below what you thought about the design, what you thought about the sound, and uh, anything that goes through your mind. Once again, I would like to remind you of my tech channel where I only review tech. I also review tech that I buy myself, not just stuff that companies send to me. So you get a better idea of what I meant to and why I buy certain stuff. Other than that, 512 Audio, thank you so much for sending me the Limelight Microphone dynamic, I will definitely try to test it with my other interfaces. But in the meantime, I'm going to thank you for watching this video. Go out there, make me proud, get level, out.